Welcome to the fourth video in our series on traditional approaches to cost assignment. This video continues the example from our previous video on departmental overhead rates and focuses on the direct allocation method of reallocating service departments to production departments. So what are our learning objectives for this video? First, we will revise the underlying workings of the departmental overhead rates. Once we have done this, we will continue with our departmental overhead example. Specifically, our focus will be on allocating the service department overheads to the production departments using the direct allocation method. Remember that this is our process of how we calculate departmental overhead rates. In our previous video, we focused on steps 1 to 3 with the end result of having allocated our various overheads to the different departments in the factory. In this video, we will be focusing on steps 4 to 7, which look at the reallocation of service departments, the calculation of the departmental overhead rates, and the allocation to the product. Now, why do we need to worry about inter-service department allocation? Our first step is to understand what inter-service department allocations are. This is basically when we have more than one service department, and the service departments make use of each other. So let us consider what happens in such a case and the problem that we encounter. Here we start with our first service department and we allocate it out based on the other department's usage of that service department. We allocate some of the service department 1 cost to production department 1, some to production department 2, some to production department 3, and because service department 2 also makes use of service department 1, we allocate some of the overheads to service department 2. Now this leaves us in a position that service department 1 has now zero overheads. But we have not yet allocated out service department 2. So we allocate some of service department 2 to production department 1, some to production department 2, some to production department 3, and we see that service department 1 uses service department 2, so we allocate some overheads to service department 1. Now what has happened? The overheads in service department 2 are now zero. However, since service department 1 has just been allocated some overheads from service department 2, it is no longer zero. So our problem is that service department 2 is now zero, but service department 1 is no longer zero. This is problematic because remember that all overheads need to be allocated to the products. However, the products only go through the production departments. They never go through the service departments. Therefore, all our overheads need to be allocated to our production departments only, and we cannot sit with some overheads remaining in our service departments, which is currently what we have. For this reason, then, we have four methods for inter-service department reallocations. These are the direct allocation method, the specified order of closing method, the repeated distribution method, and the simultaneous equation method. Now when considering which of these methods to use, we need to consider the extent of service department interaction, as well as the cost and benefit of each method. In this video, we will be focusing on the direct allocation method. What are the principles of the direct allocation method? The key here is that we simply ignore the inter-service department allocations. Therefore, we allocate from the service departments to the production departments directly and ignore any allocations to other service departments. Let us have a look at how this works by using our example. So we're going to have a look at the same example as our previous video. We will be using this example to work through each method so that we can easily compare how they work. You should remember from our previous video that our first table provides us with our overhead costs for the factory in total, while the second table then provides us with some basic information about each department, which we used in our previous video to allocate the overhead costs to the departments. We are then provided with a required where we need to value this product. Notice that I have added to the required at the bottom, specifying that the company uses the direct allocation method to reallocate service departments. Now in our previous video, we allocated out the overheads to the various departments. 
If you can't remember how we arrived at the numbers on screen, please go back and watch the video on allocating overheads to the departments. Our next step then is to allocate our service departments, which were procurement and maintenance, to our production departments of cutting and assembly. Now for the direct method, remember that we ignore any inter-service allocations. As a result, it does not matter which department we allocate first. We can allocate procurement first, or we can allocate maintenance first. It really does not matter. For the purpose of this example, I will allocate out procurement first. So let us do just that. When allocating out our procurement department, just like when we allocated out our overheads of depreciation, rental and rates, electricity and the supervisor salary, we want to use a driver that best explains the other department's usage of procurement. So if we look at the information, what do you think best explains the usage of a procurement department? Take a few minutes to understand what you think a procurement department would do and which potential driver would best explain the other department's usage. Okay, so procurement relates to the purchasing of goods or services. If we look at our information, raw material orders would probably be the best option available. With the direct method, remember that we need to ignore the other service department's usage. So therefore, we need to ignore the maintenance department's usage of procurement, and we only allocate it to the cutting department and assembly department. So we need to allocate the overhead as 50 over 85 to our cutting department and 35 over 85 to our assembly department, where the 85 is simply the sum of the cutting department's 50 raw material orders plus the assembly department's 35 raw material orders. Notice how we have allocated the full 98,000 Rand to our cutting and assembly departments. Note that I have rounded to the nearest hold Rand for the purposes of this example. Now if we add the 57,647 Rand and the 40,353 Rand, we arrive back to the total of our procurement department of 98,000 Rand. Note that there was no allocation to our maintenance department. Now we need to do the same for our maintenance department. Take a moment to decide which potential item we would allocate our maintenance overheads based on. Okay, that is great. We would base it on maintenance hours. Remember that we need to completely ignore the 150 maintenance hours used by the procurement department. We are only interested in the 350 hours used by the cutting department and the 500 hours used by the assembly department. If we add these together, this gives us a total of 850 hours. So we need to allocate the overhead as 350 over 850 to our cutting department and 500 over 850 to our assembly department. Again, notice here that the full 70,500 Rand is allocated only to the production departments of cutting and assembly. If we add the 29,029 Rand and the 41,471 Rand, we arrive at a total of 70,500. Notice again that nothing has been allocated to the procurement department. If we then total our departments, we see that cutting has a total of 236,176 Rand, while assembly has a total of 361,824 Rand. Notice that both our service departments have zero overheads in them. We have thus allocated all our overheads out of our service departments and into our production departments. Also notice that if we add the cutting overheads and the assembly overheads, we arrive at our total overheads of 598,000 Rand. Our next step now is to identify our driver for each production department. Remember we are looking for a volume-based driver. Our volume-based drivers are units produced, direct labor hours, and machine hours. Now in this example, 
we are only provided with direct labor hours and machine hours. In deciding which driver to use, we really want to see if our department is machine intensive, in which case we use machine hours, or labor intensive, in which case we use direct labor hours. Now we might be told if a department is capital or labor intensive, or we might need to figure it out ourselves. In this question, we are not told if the department is labor or capital intensive, so we need to determine this for ourselves. We can do this by looking at the direct labor hours and machine hours in each department. If we look at the cutting department, we see that it uses significantly more labor hours than machine hours. Therefore, this department is more likely to be labor intensive and we will use direct labor hours of 40,000 as the cost driver. If we move on to the assembly department, here we use more machine hours than labor hours. So this department is more likely to be capital intensive and we will use machine hours of 38,000 as our cost driver. Remember that different departments can have different overhead drivers. We can now fill in our cost drivers in our table and divide our total overheads for each department by the cost driver for each department to arrive at our separate overhead rates for each department. It is important to note how each overhead rate applies. So for cutting, we have 5 Rand and 90 cents per direct labor hour. When we apply this to the product, we only apply the 5 Rand and 90 cents to the product's labor hours in the cutting department. Likewise, the assembly department overhead rate is 9 Rand and 52 cents per machine hour. We only apply this 9 Rand and 52 cents to the product's machine hours in the assembly department. Let us see how this works by completing this example. So remember that our goal was to cost this product. Remember our basic format is the direct material cost plus the direct labor cost to give us our prime cost. We then add our variable and fixed overheads to arrive at our total cost. In this example, we do not have variable overheads. Take a moment now to pause this video and see if you can calculate the product cost on your own. So let us work through this example now and we will begin our calculation with direct materials. This is easy as we are already told that the direct material cost is 100 Rand per unit. Next we can consider our direct labor. Now we see that our direct labor is paid at a rate of 15 Rand per hour. We do, however, need to ask how many direct labor hours does our product use? What we need to do here is add up the labor in both departments to get a total of 8 hours of labor. Now you may be thinking, but wasn't the assembly department capital intensive? Why do we need to worry about the labor in that department? Remember, we are currently considering the labor cost. We still need to pay all our labor for the work they have done, regardless of what department they are in. A second thing to watch out for is that labor in the different departments may be paid at different rates. In our example, all labor is paid at the same rate, so this is not an issue. So we can take our 8 hours and multiply it by the 15 Rand per direct labor hour to arrive at a total labor cost of 120 Rand. We can now add our direct materials and direct labor costs together to arrive at our prime cost of 220 Rand. Next we need to allocate our overheads. Again, it doesn't matter which order we do this in, so we will start with the cutting department. Now remember that the cutting department is labor intensive, so we want to ignore the machine hours and only consider the five labor hours. The five direct labor hours in the cutting department then need to be multiplied by the cutting department overhead rate, which we calculated earlier at 5 Rand and 90 cents per direct labor hour. Notice that we are matching the five direct labor hours used in the cutting department with the 5 Rand 90 cents per direct labor hour for the cutting department. 
This gives us our overhead allocation for the cutting department of 29 Rand and 50 cents per unit. Now we move on to the assembly department. Remember, we determined that this department was capital intensive and the overhead allocation rate was per machine hour. Therefore, in the assembly department, we ignore any labor hours and we are only concerned with our seven machine hours. The seven machine hours in the assembly department then needs to be multiplied by the assembly department's overhead rate, which we calculated earlier at 9 Rand and 52 cents per machine hour. Notice again that we are matching the seven machine hours used in the assembly department with the 9 Rand and 52 cents per machine hour for the assembly department. This gives us our overhead allocation for assembly of 66 Rand and 64 cents per unit. We can then finish off our example by adding the overhead cost to the prime costs to arrive at a total cost of 316 Rand and 14 cents per unit. I hope you have managed to arrive at the same answer when you calculated the product cost earlier on your own. In our next video, we will look at how this example would have differed had we used the specified order of closing method. See you next time.